Hey everybody, this is Jason Ritchie and welcome back to Free Friday. My incredible wife, Miss Caitlin Dibble, is filming behind the camera right now. Yes, sir, I am. Subscribe today, hit the subscribe button. Today's video is going out by request, by request, by request, by request, by something like 15 or 16 requests in my inbox from Mr. Wade Strong on how to use pedals. So before we get into how to use pedals, let me tell you, the first thing that you should do is learn to play without any pedals. Now, maybe you've already done this, but you want to get your amp sounding as good as possible. So please click on the link below called Getting Loud Without Feedback. I'll give you a little bit of it here and now, but I'm not going to give you the whole thing, all right? But what you want to do is you want to dial in your amp. Now, here today, I have three different amplifiers one of which I've never, ever tried before. This is your amplifier, Caitlin. Ooh. Right. Which we picked up for $30 at a Goodwill. So why do I mention the price? The reason is, is that where there's a will, there's a way. And you can do more with what you have than you think. The answer is not always more, right? Sometimes we can do really good with what we have. Now, before I go into the pedals or even how to play without the pedals, let me tell you the first thing I started with was a harmonica. And I spent years on that. And then I got an amp. And, and then I got a, a, a cooler microphone, right? And I had that for years. And then I started with one pedal. And I had that one pedal for years. Then I got another pedal. And I knew everything that that little pedal could do. I knew everything that amp could do before I got more, before I added more. It was a simpler time back then. There wasn't so many custom harmonicas, harmonica microphones, harmonica pedals. There were just a few things and we just wandered upon them and I had time to acclimate. So in today's world of being constantly bombarded with get this, buy that, this, learn that, it's a good idea to sometimes sit with one thing for a little while. Right now, I'm going through the pedal board but I'm not into, I'm, I'm, none of the pedals are on. As a matter of fact, let's just plug straight into the amplifier. Okay, so I'm going from a Jason Ritchie Lone Wolf mic, the first one that was ever made, and it says, who dat? And then in parentheses, we dat, all that. All right, and I'm going straight into the amp. <laughs> an A harmonica, okay? So already the tone is good. It sounds good. Now, what makes an amp sound even better? Volume. Back up. Look at that gato. <laughs> Whoa. Just what do you think? Digging it. Volume. Yes, sir. So, if I turn the amp up, all right, I gotta watch out for feedback, right? But if I turn the amp up, back up a little, it might be distorting on the phone. Go all the way back, right? Yeah. in a vocal mic. A bullet mic compresses and distorts. Let's look at some options for compression and distortion. In order to get the amp to distort, at that level, I had to really turn it up to the point where maybe it was too loud, too loud for the bar, too loud for the neighbors, too loud for the guitar. Okay, so now I'm going into the pedal board, plugging the pedal board into the amp. 
None of the effects are on. Let's make sure it works. So, so much for pedals suck your tone, okay? <laughs> it's basically the same volume, all right? And I turned it down, okay? So here we go. So the first problem I have right now, feedback. So if you're looking for a pedal to stop that, this Lone Wolf Heart Shield is pretty damn good. Look at that. Let's turn it off. Ooh, turn I it miss on. It. <laughs> turn it on. So, does it affect my tone? Barely. Barely at all. It's almost, almost indiscernible. Okay, so, distortion at a low volume. So I want to sound like I did loud, but without uh, being loud. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the amp down even more. So it's actually more distorted than it was before when it was blasting and it's at half or a quarter of the volume. Right? Now, not only that, now a bullet mic will do that. A bullet mic will distort, okay? But the problem is it distorts a fixed amount. So this pedal here, I can turn up the distortion. Yeah, watch out for the volume. And I can also adjust the amount of bass. This is on 10. So this is the Lone Wolf Heartbreak. Lone Wolf Heartbreak. So it's a distortion pedal, or what, what I would call a preamp, and uh, a bass boost pedal. So I'm at an extremely low volume. Let me go even lower. The amp is on like uh, a quarter of one. Right, so I can change the amount of distortion that I get. Cool. Okay, so now the next pedal that I like is this little compression pedal. So what that's gonna do, now it's gonna drop my volume a little bit, so I can either turn the volume up on the pedal itself, right? Or I can turn the volume up on the amp. It's really the same thing. Not quite that much. the same volume as the non-bent notes, so everything comes out at equal value. All right, how to use pedals? First, get the amp sounding great, and then use the pedal for what it's intended to do. Change the amount of distortion at a lower volume. So if you have a bullet mic, 
your bullet mic may be distorting and compressing just enough. Just enough that you don't need a distortion pedal or a compression pedal. However, you may find yourself with a bigger amplifier that can't get that amount of distortion without being unreasonably loud. In that case, a distortion pedal or a compression pedal may or both may come in super handy at giving you that tone that you love when the amp is on 10, but at a more reasonable volume that doesn't hurt everybody. Okay, let's 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 move to another amp here. Do you need a distortion pedal? Let's start there. Say you have a small amp like this one right here. So this is an old 60s premiere. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna lay a secret on you, YouTube, and hopefully I'm gonna save you guys thousands of dollars. Now I'm sure there's some audiophiles who are gonna disagree with me, okay? But any small tube amp will sound great. Will they sound as great as this one? Probably not. <laughs> okay, but any small tube amp, any, why? Why is that? Because it has a six to eight inch speaker low wattage, you turn it up to 10, and it sounds nasty. What does nasty mean? It means it's distorting and compressing. Whether you're using this kind of a mic or a bullet mic. If you're using a bullet, it will distort and compress more. If you're using one of these, it'll be a more natural sound. Somebody asked me recently, how do I get a small amp to sound more modern? The easiest answer is to use a modern microphone because you can't take away distortion from an amp that's, that's other than turning it down, okay? Okay, so here's this little nasty amp, straight in, no pedals. trombone played through wax paper, right? That's straight in. So you don't, if you have a little amp like this, you don't need a distortion pedal. You don't need a compression pedal, and you probably don't need an anti-feedback pedal. So are you saying that it doesn't have to be left in a puddle for a month or something <laughs> before it sounds that good, just as a tube amp? It's gonna sound that good? This amp was found in a puddle, is what she's saying. Face down in the puddle of the back of a club. But it doesn't always take that. No, no. It just <laughs> needs to be a small amp, and it'll distort on its own. Okay, so now we can get to the other pedals. Okay, so I'm going back into my... This is my little travel pedal board. Believe it or not, this is the small one. Over here is the big one. We'll get to that later. It's mostly the same thing. It's just the essentials, right? What I consider the essentials, and a couple of extra fun little gadgets. Okay. Back to my amp, here's my tone right now. That nice compression. that you go, is it on? Is it on? It should be just enough, right? Right. For most of the time. Sometimes you want a crazy one. So speaking of crazy, what do you need? If you have an amp like this and you want a pedal, which one would you get? Well, the only one I would, I would imagine would be this Lone Wolf Harp Reverb or a Reverb pedal or a Delay pedal. That's all you need, right? Okay. Little interruption. That Aquapus just broke on us. All right. We'll figure it out later. Kate's aquapus broke. Let's take a look at the reverb. The reverb is another option. So there's the reverb on. The slap. 
slang for that is wet. We say it sounds wet. Call that dry. A dry tone. A wet tone. is well, we still haven't covered the clean cap but we'll get to that last the last pedal I have on this is what's called a sonic maximizer I was the first harmonica player to start using this I was endorsed with BBE at the time I think I'm still on their website but but anyway it it basically is a uh, a sonic EQ so you have two knobs low a high frequency and a low frequency so you can change the way your overall sound. Now, when we talk about something that sounds muddy, what usually is happening, as far as I understand sonically, is that bass frequencies and high frequencies travel at different speeds. So they re they're received at the ear at different speeds. What this pedal attempts to do is to stop that from happening and have them travel at a similar speed. So here it is without it. And here it is with. So uh, that's with the high contour up, so I can turn that down if that's too high to your ears. On. Off. On. Let's mess with the low frequency. That's on, off, on. So it's a little bit of an EQ pedal, but more on the sonic frequency side. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tool to clean up any amp. Now this pedal and the reverb would be something you could use with a little amp like that. But that's really all I would say about it. So let's look at the last pedal in the chain, the clean cat. Remember guys, I started with a delay pedal, which I had for a couple of years. I then added an octave pedal, which I turned the octaves off and turned the direct level up. It, be it became a compression pedal. That was it. And then I just added one and one and one after year after year after year until I arrived where I am now. Um, when I go to a gig and, um, and, and somebody asks me to sit in, I just play through the PA mic. And I'm happy doing that. I don't always want or need to have all of these pedals. And if there's another harmonica player up there and he's got an amp, or if I have a mic, I'll plug right into that and I'll just do the best I can with that. Sometimes I even like it better. All right, here's the clean cat. So here's without, without it. Here it is with. So just without. With. And that's set very conservatively on three. So if I were to turn that up. On. Right, you might have to back off a little. So let's, let's address this issue. So, so sometimes when you got a lot of distortion and a lot of gain, right, you can turn your heart shield up all the way or whatever feedback device you're using and it'll reduce it. But it really helps to just kind of move a little away from the amp. Right, and, and also become friends with your volume knob. So when you're not playing, turn this down. And then when you're playing, turn it up. Just slide it back down, right? And you don't always have to be on 10, right? You can set it at 10. But you can play at it. So with the clean cat, generally what I'll do is I'll step on it maybe two or three times in the entire night. 
you know, just for a little boost. Right. Now we're at the deluxe pedal board. Now this is, when you reach this level, you've gone, you've just gone too far. I mean, J Johnny Sansone calls this the rocket launcher. And believe me, I'm already planning my next one, right? So anyway, we have a lot of the same pedals, the Harp Shield, the Harp Break, but we have a few extras, the Harp Reverb, we have a few extras that are down here. The, the compression is down here though. We, are, we have an auto wah, we have a phaser, and we have two different delay pedals. And then here's the smaller version of the Sonic Maximizer right there. That little red one. Ooh. Right, it's exactly the same pedal, just in a more modern body. Now the pedals on, underneath are controlled here, and some of these are controlled up top. Now we didn't get to talk about delay because since the Aquapus broke. And we're also wireless now, which is nice. So it's very cool to be wireless, right? You can, there's a lot of new wirelesses out there. You don't need this one. So let's hear it with a little delay. The reverb's on, so let's add a short delay. So what we'll be hearing is the carbon copy under here, which is an analog delay. I'll turn the reverb off so you can just hear the delay. So that's what I would call like a slap back. It's just a little boop pop. nice little short delay. So now you can have just one delay pedal, but when you wanted a longer delay, you would have to reach down and then turn it up. And sometimes if you, you know, you got the extra money or you've waited a while and you saved up some money, you can add a longer delay. So now we're going to hear the flashback right here. All right. So here's the long delay. All right. Let's take a listen to what it does. So this, there's a lot of different delays on this that you can choose, right? Right now it's set on analog delay. So I'm trying to make it sound as much as like that Aquapus that we couldn't hear, unfortunately. All right, but here we go. Probably a reverb or a delay unless your amp already has reverb. All right, so I got some other pedals on here. This is a fun one right here. Right now we're listening to the pitchfork. And there's a lot of different options on it. I can go really low. Even lower. So the, one of the fun things about pedals is they can make you play a little different, come up with stuff. Here's one of my favorites. 
the Ottawa. Now this thing right here is called a looper switcher. So it takes all the pedals out of being plugged into each other and plugs them straight into this. So in other words, I'm not going through all these pedals. I'm going through one, one box and this box controls all the pedals. So even though these pedals are on all the time, they're not on until I actually switch. They're not engaged in my signal chain until I actually switch them then. So if there's any signal loss at all, at all, which most pedals these days are true bypass, which means that there's really no signal loss at all. But still, this takes them out of the chain unless I'm using them. So now I'm going to turn on the Ottawa. That one I love. That's probably my favorite pedal that does stuff, right? So the other pedals are just tone pedals, right? That's what this is. This whole board is basically just nothing but tone pedals, except for the Aquapus, which isn't working, right? So anyway, that's what's cool about it, right? Is that you got some that do crazy things, and on, and on this pedal board here, right? All, all I have are the on, on this box here. Right, are the ones that are crazy. The rest are always on, right? The, they're always on, right? And, and like I said, you, you don't need them. If you want to just plug into an amp and turn it up really, really loud, no problem. But if you want to have one amp and use that at the coffee shop and then use that at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where this one was, you can. But you're going to have to be able to control your volume. You can't have Rock and Roll Hall of Fame volume at the sacred grounds coffee shop you can't do that you will get kicked out they will never have you back at the coffee shop so you can adjust and right turn the amp down even more but turn the distortion up So I, I can almost play at the same volume as the harmonica. So it's like the same volume as a as a harmonica, but yet it has that amplified tone. I can add all the other pedals. Maybe even a little phaser probably wondering about that MXR, it's John Lisi's pedal, I borrowed it two years ago. A little delay with that. almost like a bow, uh, like a bass is being bowed yeah. with it. Yeah. That's a lot of that's an octave. Here it is by itself, right, with just a delay. That's a once in a night, maybe once every three nights kind of pedal. It's on there for fun, right? They're all on there for fun. Every one of them is there for fun. You don't need them. If you want to get a pedal, get one. Don't, you know, I've seen people have bought everything that I have. They bought the microphone, every single pedal, the right pedal board. They even asked me what kind of cables do I use? I tell them they spend thousands of dollars acquiring it all at once and then they go, how come I don't sound like you? And it breaks my heart because I feel so terrible that they spent all that money. But 
If they had asked me first, I would have said, get a delay pedal or get the lone wolf reverb pedal or get a reverb pedal. Find the cheapest reverb pedal you can find off of Amazon. If that's all the money you got, you know, look, let me plug, let me talk to about that for a second. I will say this, with Lone Wolf, these pedals are built for harmonica. In the very beginning, what I had to do was, Guitar Center had a policy that you could buy stuff and return it. And so what I would do is I would buy five or six pedals and then I would return them because none of them sounded good for harmonica because they were all made for guitar. And then I would get five or six more different ones, often the same kind of pedal, distortion, reverb, delay. And then out of those, I might find one that I liked. So I would return the other five or return the other four or whatever it was. And then it took me years to do that. And then I met Randy Landry from Lone Wolf and he was making pedals specifically for harmonica. So I didn't have to go through that trial and error period because Randy recognized the frequency spectrum of which the harmonica operates best in other issues like impedance and things like that that were important. So yes, you can buy stuff off of Amazon and yes, some of it will work and you can get stuff used. I would recommend that all day. If you find something, trade. That's the cool thing about the pedals is they're like matchbox cars. You can trade them. Like I said, I got one of John Leese's here. I had Kate's pedal here, which I broke. So I've never used a sample fire ever. You'll have to take my word for it. I've never plugged in. You guys have seen it in the back. It's Kate's amp. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn everything down to zero. Okay. So it has two channels, I'm noticing. One of them is called Thrash. So I know that's going to be the distortion slash gain channel. We'll have fun with all of it. All right, here we go. So I'm plugging into the high gain channel. We'll try that. And the first thing I'm going to do, I have everything off, 222. No volume, no lows, no mids, no highs. The first thing I'll do is turn the volume, turn the volume up. All right, let's go with the low gain channel. Here we are. Oh, wait. Oh, I had the bright knob up. Is my, oh, my volume on my mic was down. There we go. some lows. Let's get a little volume too, right? Right? That's with no mids, right? Let's put a little mids in there, a little more treble, a little more bass. shop you could this could be a 57 it could be a 58 it could be anything okay the only cool advantage of this is it's easier to hold and it has a volume control and you're supporting great people in Louisiana right now these amps come with built-in distortion so now it has distortion but it's not a good sounding distortion <laughs> not for harmonica for guitar <laughs> All right, but anyway, back to the regular channel. Anyway, PD solid state amp, 
through basically an instrument mic, Lone Wolf signature, Jason Ritchie signature mic, no pedals at all. You heard this one with no pedals. You heard this one with no pedals. They all sounded great. What do pedals offer you? Options. How do you use pedals? One at a time. Spend lots of time on each one. Get to know it. Try the, pe try the amp without the pedal. Try it with. Try turning the amp up, the pedal down, the pedal up, the amp down. Do everything you can to do more with less before you think about adding another pedal. And if this is all you got, a solid state PV, go for it. Who plays through a PV amp? Billy Branch. Does he sound amazing? B Billy Branch sounds amazing through a, a PV Bandit. It's not even as fancy as this one, and he sounds great. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the credits. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Jason Ritchie's YouTube channel. 16 years of incredible YouTube harmonica-related content. That's right, 16 years. At this point, over 500 free instructional videos. If you're interested in what kind of harmonicas I play, microphones, amplifiers, pedals, any harmonica-related products, please check out my sponsors. These sponsors, in one way or another, also help keep these videos going. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Blue Moon Harmonicas, bringing you the best in custom harmonicas. We got custom cover plates, custom combs. You can get your name put on it, just like me. Reed work, refurbished pre-war marine bands. Look at that, they put the little brace there, no more crushing the covers. The Lone Wolf Blues Company, very best in pedals, microphones, almost anything you need for your amplified harmonica need. The Lone Wolf Blues Company, right here out of Ponchatoula, Louisiana. We got you. Harp gear, amplifiers, they got big ones, they got small ones. You know what they sound like? They sound like the best tube amps on the market. Harp gear, amplifiers out of Ocala, Florida. Pedal pad, pedal boards. Incredible custom pedal boards built to last, made by two brothers who really, really care. Honer harmonicas, a moon cat loves the Honer harmonica. I like the Marine Band. I get Tom to put the little special 20 cover plates on it. He tricks them out, but they play great right out of the box. All of these sponsors are linked below in the description box. What else is linked below? Patreon. Consider becoming a Patreon patron. You'll be supporting me. You'll be supporting the cause. You'll be keeping these videos free for everybody. And you'll get a lot of extra content over at Patreon. You'll get vlogs, occasionally some extra lessons, some posts that you might not see on Facebook. A lot of stuff that I can't say or won't say here on YouTube is over on Patreon. I love my Patreon family. You guys are the best. If you're not into the monthly subscription, you can also give me a one-time tip at Venmo or PayPal below too. I'm a touring musician and I play all over the country, really all over the world with all kinds of different acts. Check out my website, www.mooncat.org. In all seriousness, YouTube, Patreon, my sponsors have absolutely changed my life. Subscribe below, set reminders for the videos, don't miss any events. Every single Friday, there's a free harmonica lesson and a lot more. Even if you're just subscribing, you're helping me a lot. Those of you that are joining me on Patreon, you guys are helping me to make better decisions with my career. In all sincerity, thank you so much, YouTube, for just an incredible, incredible outlet. It's a video diary. I get to look back at 16 years of these videos. I had a lot of new friends, some really fine musicians, made some great contacts in the industry, and it's all because of you. Thank you, my harmonica family.